Now that we have our head all set up, we're gonna talk about an overview of all the different controls that you see on the back of the D-Light 4 heads. So right off the bat, we're gonna start with the mains or our cord that we plug into the unit. And right beside this, we actually have also the fuse area, which is a slow blow fuse that you use. We have the mains on off switch, so we're gonna turn the unit on now, and you can see it come to life. We have the capability as well of seeing everything that you see on the back here, and we'll go through those, uh, what every button does a little later. The other fuse area that we have on this particular head happens to be the modeling lamp fuse, which is located in the upper right-hand corner here. This is also the same fuse that is used that we talked about a, a few minutes ago near the power supply. We have the capability as well of firing the unit at any time with the test button, and that's this button here that's illuminated for you. You can see we can fire the unit and the unit will respond. We have a sink socket, which is located on the lower right right here. This particular sink socket takes the extra cable that is provided. This can, be, this can come in handy when you run into uh, areas where reception with a radio trigger may not be optimal. The nice thing moving onward is the fact that the whole display you see back here is a digital display. So this allows us to see a lot of different data, see the setting of our lights, and we'll talk more about what the menus can do on the inside. When we move along to the unit here, we have the, the capability of the charge beep indicator. We can have the unit on where it beeps, like we have now, or we can turn that off, and when we fire it, you can hear that there's no beep. Moving along, we have the iCell on-off, which is programmable, and this is the iCell socket here, which happens to be the actual iCell to your right, and when you turn that unit on, now you'd be able to trigger it with another flash, if you turn the eye cell off, then you are working strictly either with the sync cord or with the sky port. Moving along, the next thing we're going to talk about is the actual power up and down of the unit. We have these two buttons here, which allows you to power up and down the unit. The great thing about keeping the beep indicator on is you can hear when the unit is set and ready for you to fire after you've made power adjustments, whether they be up or down. The other great thing on this particular one is a uh, particular head is we have the capability of having a modeling lamp mode and it gives us proportion, minimum, maximum, and of course off. And that happens to be this button here. If I hit the button on, you can see that it's set to come on. If I hit the unit off, it doesn't, uh, the unit does come off. And then I can have it set proportionately so that when I boost and raise my power, it, the modeling lamp adjusts accordingly. The, the other big feature on this particular head is it has the tilt head here which is using a ratcheted handle and it also has an extra umbrella receptor if you decide that you want to attach a bigger umbrella on the side here. The standard socket that we are using of course to mount this particular head onto the light stand is known as a 5 8 inch or 16 millimeter socket and or in the industry, some people call it a baby mount. So this is a baby receiver that the head has built in and we are on a light stand with a baby mount. Finally, the other thing you can see under here is if you look through, you can see the center post, which is a seven mil diameter. And this is where we inserted the deflector kit. We can also insert seven millimeter shaft umbrellas through here. And this allows you, again, to have different creative looks with your light shapers or modifiers. And finally, the, the last thing we have, of course, is our locking screw, which you can see here on the right. And this allows you to mount and securely, uh, to mount and unmount the unit securely to the light stand. The first part of the menu that we are going to access right off the bat is when we push the up and down arrows, we can access here what is called normal speed mode and off. In most cases, you are going to operate your head in what is called normal mode and are required to set it to R1. R2, or speed mode as it is called, is used primarily for leaf shutter lenses or lenses that have the aperture, the uh, leaf shutter built into them. So for most applications and most people's needs, you want to have it set for R1. If you set it for R0, it will shut off 
the Skyport completely. Now we're going to go into the menu and access the groups, which would be important when we're working with the Skyport to assign the lights. We have group one, we have group two, group three, and group four. Depending on which light you'd like to assign in the Skyport will determine which grouping you assign to the unit. If this is my main, typically I assign this unit to group one, and then I would access my fill light possibly as group two. The choice is yours. Now we're going to access the channels or frequencies. Again, we push our up and down arrows. We use the modeling lamp to get to that area. And as you can see, we have frequency one, frequency two, all the way up to frequency eight. And you can pick the different frequencies so you do not conflict with other people that may be working around you. And or if you need, when you are working in an environment where you may have some interference, you may want to choose to change the frequency to get better reception to the unit from your Skyport Plus. The next area we're going to access is called the power steps per push. And this is decided again by pushing the up and down arrows. We then scroll down with the modeling lamp. And as you can see right now, we have the unit set for tenths of, sec of stops, but maybe we like to work in what is called thirds, fourths, or half stops. When you do so, we will put it right now into a half stop so you can see what happens when we actually go to make changes to the head, whether it be on the sky port or the head itself, it actually moves in half stop increments. This is useful depending on how you like to work when you are taking your photographs. Personally, I like to work with one tenth of a stop. So I will wait for the unit to sync up as it's adjusted the power down and it will adjust the power down and then we will be able to go back into the menu by pushing the up and down arrows, scrolling through to that menu, and then I personally like to have it set at one, and now I can actually control my unit in tenths of stops, and you can see I can go from 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, and so on upwards, or I can come back down in tenths of stops as well. The next button we're going to talk about is the photo cell button. And this has a few different options that you can use when working with the D-Lite 4 units. If you push the button once, it turns the eye cell on. And it means now when a flash is in the area and triggers it, it will automatically fire this unit. The other feature that this particular unit has is pre-flash capability. And this works in conjunction with the pre-flashes that your camera may send a signal to and you're using this button to hold down, as you can see here, and I can actually set the pre-flashes. This is not always used, but is a great feature for those that decide they need to use it. The choice is really yours. The Skyport Plus that comes with your D-Lite kit, as shown right here, has a carrying strap that you can attach to the side of the unit right here, and also comes with an optional cable to plug into the side of the Skyport right here, and this allows for direct connectivity to a camera that maybe doesn't have a hot shoe. Now we're going to set up the actual Skyport unit. First of all, we need to install a set of AA batteries, and as you can see here, we've already installed our AA set and are ready to go. By simply putting the, the back door on the unit, you can see we can slide the door on and off so that we can change batteries. AA batteries, of course, are not included with your Skyport Plus. Now we're gonna get ready to put our Skyport on top of our camera. As you can see here, we have a center pin. That pin works with all different camera manufacturers' cameras, so that this does not have to be camera specific. We now can take the unit, make sure that we pull the locking knob and open it up so it's loose, attach the Skyport Plus to our hot shoe, and now, we can put the locking knob down. For added reception quality, it has a swivel feature, which you can use if desired, if the reception is not where you want it to be. And now we're going to turn the actual Skyport unit on. We can reach to the side button here and we can flip the unit on. The unit will come to life. And as you can see, it's in green mode or it shows green lights. The lights that are showing here means that it is working in normal mode. Working through the different groupings, channels, and frequencies that this unit can work in, we will start to actually set up the unit. First of all, the mode, we'll start with the mode button. 
If the unit is in normal mode, it'll be green. If we go to red mode, like you see here, it means it's in speed mode. Typically, that is used with cameras that work with leaf shutters. Most users will be working with DSLRs, so the mode that you want to work with is going to be the green mode, and this is this mode that you see here where the whole uh, lights on the Skyport Plus turn green. Now we can go in and actually set up our groups. We have the capability of setting up all, or we can go in and set up groups individually, one, two, three, and four, depending on how we like to work. And now we can also set up our channels from one, three, seven, nine, up to 20. And as you can see, we have different, eight different channels here. What we are going to do for this demonstration is we are actually going to set up everything on different, uh, the two lights on two different groups. And for our demonstration purposes here, we're gonna work on channel three. The three remaining buttons that you see at the lower part of the Skyport Plus are your minus and your plus buttons. These, of course, control the power to the units that you're working with. In the case of the D-Lite 4, you can actually control your power anywhere the light, the heads happen to be by simply plus, pushing the minus or the plus button. Finally, if you want to test your unit, you can actually push the trigger button and both units will fire. We will show this more once we set up the light heads. Now we're going to set up the sky port on the back of the head of the D-Lite 4s. To access our menus, we have to push the up and down arrows. We already have the unit set to normal mode. Now we want to go into the different group modes, as we mentioned earlier. In the case of this head, I'm going to set it to group 1. I'm going to push the modeling light again, and the channel or frequency that we are going to work on is group 3. Now the unit is set and ready to receive the signal from the Skyport Plus. Now that we have the head set up, as you saw before, on channel three and group one, we have our Skyport set up on channel three and on group one. And as a result, we can push the test button and you can see that we have communication with the head and it is firing seamlessly. The other great feature here that we can set with the Skyport, which is an important feature, is the power up and the power down. When I make those adjustments, if you wait for the beep, that means the head is really ready for you to send the signal and ready to fire at the required power setting adjustment that you just made. We are going to do the power setting using the sky port. We don't need to touch the back of the unit. We can just obviously use the sky port and change the power to the desired setting we would like. In this case, I want to work at 2.9 power setting and I've made those changes by using the sky port plus. Now we are going to set up our Skyport Plus for light number two. We've already set it for light one. We have it on channel three, group one. We want to make the change of the group number here for the light number two, and we are going to assign it to group number two. This is very useful when you want to have your main light controlled individually and say your fill light controlled individually. In this case, we're going to set light number two as group number two and still keep it on the same channel which happens to be channel number three. Now we're ready to set the second D-Lite 4 unit. We push both arrows. We can already see that we are in normal mode. We're in group one, and ideally we'd like to be in group two. The other thing we'd like to change here is the channel or the frequency. In this case, we wanted to work in channel three. So we push back. Now we go to frequency one, and we change it to frequency three or channel three and now we're ready to start firing this unit individually on group two on channel three. Now that we have the Skyport Plus set up, you can see that we have it set for channel three and group two. If we go to the back of the head and we push the up and down arrows, and then we push the modeling lamp, you can see we also have the head set up for group two and channel three. This means now that we are synced completely with Skyport, and when we go to push the test button, it will react and fire seamlessly. Added extra uh, capability of the Skyport Plus is the fact that you can now increase and decrease your power. That is really nice because now you're working from your camera and you do not have to go to the back of each head to set them. If we want to fire all the heads at one time, as you know, we have this head here on group two. We have the other head that we have on group one if we want them all to fire at the same time, we would set them to all, and then they will fire both units at the same time that we happen to have set up. 
Thanks very much for taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully you'll learn a lot from what the D-Lite 4 kit can do for you with everything that we discussed today. There are a number of added accessories that are available in the Allen Chrome family, the Rotolux accessories and light boxes and shapers that can really help grow your photography as you advance. Another great advancement, say for instance you are the type of photographer that wants to experiment with high sync photography, there's an upgraded trigger called the Skyport Plus HS and it's available in Nikon, Canon units, and in Sony units. And this is a great accessory if you really want to take your photography to the next level and experiment with high sync photography. And finally, the great thing uh, about this particular unit is it allows you to do a number of settings and as you can see we can fire the unit seamlessly. The final piece that we will show quickly, is, which is a great way to learn lighting, is the Siconic meter. The L478DR unit, which is this particular meter here, this one is made for Allen Chrome. And if you visit the Siconic.com site, you will see that this particular meter is a great meter to learn lighting with. So these two great accessories are certainly accessories that you may want to experiment with. Don't forget, visit ellenchromeus.com or ellenchrome.ch for learning more about Allen Chrome. And finally, if you want to learn a little bit about reading light, visit Siconic.com and you'll see the light meter that is designed to work with Ellen Chrome seamlessly. Thanks very much and have a great day.